All right, exercise 18. This one I've had to re-record because I was kind of sloppy about my definitions and ended up saying some things that are wrong, and that's not good, so let's do this. So, yeah, I first thing, well, I won't write that out, but we're going to do the first part first um, to prove that inequality. So, I'm going to start with is let f be in L1 nu. And this I'm going to write as the intersection of L1 nu ri plus minus. And that's because nu is equal to like um, nu r plus i nu i. And then this we could write as nu r plus minus nu r minus. And we can do the same thing for here. Um, but basically the intersection of these four L1s is how we define L1 of a complex measure. So F is in the intersection of all of these L1s. Then the integral of F d nu is equal to the integral of F d, and then we just write nu as here. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to do this a very strange way. Plus minus i to the 1, 0 nu ri plus minus. And basically what I'm saying here is like nu is equal to nu r plus minus nu r minus plus i nu i plus minus i nu i minus. And so I'm trying to compactify these things here in this notation by saying this thing out here is either going to be plus or minus, depending on what this exponent here is. And then this i is going to be to the power of 1 or 0, depending on whether this subscript is r or i. And of course, r means real and i means imaginary. So this is just a compact notation, like what I did here. Anyways, so this is just by definition of what nu is. But then what we can do is you can do the triangle inequality. And um, this is going to be with respect to, oh wait, no, no, no. The sum comes out. So this is the sum, the integral over f of d, and then nu ri plus minus. And of course, the plus minus i to the 1 or 0, that's going to cancel out um, because those are all norm 1. But then. What is this equal to? This is, well, these are all positive measures, so we don't need that absolute value sign. We can just write this, ri plus minus. This is going to be finite since f is in all four of these um, L1 spaces. And thus, by definition, this means that, um, not what I was about to write, f is in L1 new if instead we suppose that f is in l1 of norm new then each integral over f d new r i plus minus and by here i mean for every single um com for each particular combination of r or i and plus or minus here, we can write this as being equal to the integral over f of, of course, you just write, you just put the absolute value there because it's positive, so that makes absolutely no difference. But then, certainly this is going to be less than or equal to the integral over f of d. And then if we make this sum bigger by adding more parts to it. And then what's this equal to? This is equal to the integral of f d nu, and that's finite. So f is in L1 nu of ri plus minus 4, whichever one. This should match up with this guy. Um, but it doesn't matter because it holds for all of these. Let's make that look a little bit more like a plus. Um, so f is in the intersection of all of these L1 new ri plus minus. 
But what is this? This is just equal to L1 new. So, yeah. Then hence, L1 new is equal to L1 of total variation of new. So now we want to prove the, the this inequality. So next, by the chain rule, and since d nu, d norm nu is equal to one almost everywhere by thirteen b, we have. That's just something that we proved in Proposition 13b. So anyways, integral of f d nu. Well, this is just integral of f, and then we write d nu, d variation of nu. And this is the chain rule. And now, what is this less than or equal to? This is less than or equal to, because this is a positive measure, we can bring the absolute values inside like we're used to doing. And this is d nu, but this is a product of two absolute values, so we can just break it up like this. But because this is e this part is equal to one everywhere, we can just replace it with one. This is integral of f d nu, and that's the inequality we wanted, and so this completes the proof.